in those days. So put your hands together for Mr. Omaya leader or a Christ-like leader in Nigeria. And then there, someone was also speaking here, and I think it was uh, Pastor Ebodaro, who is a good friend of mine. Uh, but most people don't know this, but we are online friends. We are always interviewing. <laughs> I honestly love him because he's one of those pastors you meet who's you know, down to earth and very plain about leadership in Nigeria. He's not goofy. He's not trying to tell you what he knows. He wants to learn from everybody. And I'm not saying it because we are here. This is my own personal experience with you. Uh, you know, when I was invited here by Professor Bolaji Akinemi, uh, I told him that I would not come. The reason was that I'd already seen him adopt a candidate online. And I said, if you have already made up your mind as to the candidate, why are you inviting me? He said, no. 
you have no idea this is not our making. The person who might be candidate is going to be somebody chosen by God. Yes. I am not saying that uh, I'm the person chosen by God. When you look at the book of Samuel, Israelites at the time started bothering God and Samuel. We want a new king. Give us a new king. And it was the first time God was humble towards men. Say so that's what you want, go and get it. And then Samuel warned them. First Samuel, book of First Samuel. He said, this king that you are going to get, we will turn your daughters into perfume. Oh, no show. They will turn your sons into slaves. Oh. They said they don't want here. I'm saying this to one Christendom in Nigeria. Hmm. That the king that you have chosen upon us may not be the God, the one that God chose. And you should tamper your arrogance. If you believe in God, let God choose his own king over his people. Don't go and meet in any Kaduna or Kano because God does not have a location when he wants to take his own decisions. Yes! <laughs> and you have to hear me because Christian leaders have been choosing leaders for this country for a long time. They've chosen some of the worst characters for us. Muslim leaders have chosen kings for us in this country. They've chosen some of the worst characters for us. But the point that the God we all serve has decided to be humble. Take a back seat. Because he said to you, you will see what will happen. Surely you want a king, you will get it. And that's how we came about some of the kings we have had in Nigeria over the years. That is the reason I came here today. For the first time, to preach to you. Who's a big one now a Christian? <laughs> but if I started a church, no pastor in Nigeria can compete with me in terms of membership. Because I'll be dishing out the gospel of the truth and the gospel of justice. But I don't want to enter that crowded area. I have opted to work as a servant of the people. And I have been doing it for three decades. When I speak in Nigeria, people look at me and say, because I have a good station, you know, very young feet and handsome. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, maybe Chore just came in 2015. I've been around since 1989. Anybody who attended the University of Lagos we are tested this. I was a student union president at the University of Lagos in 1992, at the age of 21. Probably the youngest to ever be a student union president. So, when some people mock me and say, ACG president, well, the truth is that some of the people who are running Nigeria today cannot govern the University of Lagos of the 90s. That's the truth. There is no way a Buhari can be elected to the University of Lagos Student Union leadership when he didn't go to university. Yes. Hallelujah. But honestly, I'm not here today to reclaim any kind of religion. I'm here to pay homage to ideas like this. I'm here to remind Nigerians, like Samuel did, that be careful when you keep pushing God in your own directions. Because Nigeria is the first country I've been in the world where people design their own gods. So when they tell their God to sleep, he sleeps. When they say wake up, God wakes up to Nigeria. When they say God, look the other way during corruption, the God will look the other way during corruption. Say God, attend our wedding, God will be there. That is not God. That is human desire that they present to us as God. And I have covered religious leaders in Nigeria exhaustively. And I'm aware that they don't like me. But if I'm liked, then my middle name will be useless, Stephen. It's the truth. Because Stephen is the first archdeacon in the Bible. I'm here to speak the truth to the people of Nigeria. That leadership that we seek 
which must come in 2023, this year, is the type of leadership that we've never seen before. It has to be a leadership of sacrifice, of humility, of honesty. It's not a leadership of a Christian or Muslim cabal. That is what took us here. Yes, the Muslims, the Christians did very well under Jonathan. I'm not afraid to say it. One of your pastors even had a private jet that was being carried, to used to carry money to South Africa to buy weapons. Yes! If the truth will kill them, let it kill them. The churches were doing very well. Then Buhari came. The mosques are doing very well. But the question is, are Nigerians doing very well? No! So, don't be part of those people who want to vote for somebody because they're Christian. History will not today. Came after the death of Christ and Paul. It was then that they started organizing around Christianity. You must elect somebody with character. That's number one. It doesn't matter whether he's Christian, Babalawo, Muslim, he has no religion. You must elect somebody who understands the essence of leadership and has passion for the growth and development of this country. Not those who have participated in destroying Nigeria. You must elect somebody for the first time. And I want to say this categorically, if possible, that Nigeria is older than not somebody who's older than Nigeria. I don't hate old people. I just hate old ideas. Yes. When I walked in, I met the general speaking up here. And I almost said, did he know me before? Because I was talking about a president that can operate an iPhone. I have four iPhones. <laughs> We're talking about disruptive leadership. That is very key and is not funny. Because when people hear disruption, they think about area boys disrupting. That's not disruption. Disruption is a process of bypassing old things. You know, basically what disruption is is that in another 10 years, traffic will become an history in, in Lagos because we'll be using drone taxis. That's disruption. Disruption is the establishment of Skype. Instead of you paying for telephone, you can reach anybody. Disruption is the creation of technological ideas that have changed the world. That's what it meant by disruption. Not what Paul Abiola was saying. You understand? Yeah, I told him to his face. He is, in my view, younger heart than his response to his ideas. Disruption is the leadership that comes here and turn Nigeria around without a bloated civil service. Disruption is a government that can pay your salaries without you going to a bank. Disruption is a system in which you don't have to go to your village to vote for your candidate, but you can do it on your device. That is disruption. Because as we are standing here today, we are not even sure that the election will happen, simply because we are still using paper elections. But India votes and by 4 p.m. the same day, they will get results of the winner of the election in India. Nigeria is just 300 million, 250 million, 200 and something million. India is one point something billion people. If India can vote and count their votes on the same day, they don't go to a tribunal. Why can't Nigeria do it? Brazil just voted. By 12 noon, you know who is likely to win the election. We don't need this bogus bureaucratic system that has slowed down Nigeria. And most importantly, we don't need leaders who are burden on the country. Honestly. That's the truth. Honestly. Any leader in 2022 that needs to be carried into office and carried out <laughs> is not going to work for Nigeria. <laughs> Any leader that cannot move a bada up and throw it down is not needed for a day. Amen. But most importantly, we should not be wearing a banner in 2023. <laughs> there, there is no need for three piece pajamas because our president should be able to go to work. And if you are wearing a banner, something might hold it back. You 
I cannot say that it must wear suits. Even if it is by then, which our parents used to wear, so that I can get to farm and come back on time. We should wear it. But what I'm saying is not the glory. Again, it comes to character, it comes to capacity, it comes to capability. It comes to exposure, it comes to education. Right? A lot of our home contestants, they don't even know where they went to school. Some of them, because they have forgotten, they some of them, they deliberately did not know. You know how you wipe out your history so that nobody can find it. But history is like money. It always has a paper trail. That's how we found out that some of them, like a pastor, a mother who stylishly reflected, may not know their parents. You know? And some of them also know their parents, but they haven't done anything to make life great for their parents. By the way, if I stay here, so between now and tomorrow, you won't, you, you will not be satisfied with what we have to say. We've had so many of these town hall meetings, but we haven't been able to resolve Nigeria's problem. Because Nigeria's problem has been so complex, because our leaders don't even understand the meaning of complexity. So their own response towards any problem or any solution to any problem is to throw more complexity towards it. But we're saying that the little we know about governance, by studying in the class, by participating in governance, by experiencing it, I've seen about 30 countries around the world. Governance in Nigeria is not rocket science. That's the major you believe. It is not rocket science to construct a road that you have paid for from Lagos to Ibadan. It doesn't have to last 30 years. I came to Lagos in 1987. The Lagos Battle Highway has been under construction since I arrived. It has not been completed since 2023. I mean, that's no rocket science. But it is up to our people. And I mean it, and I'll wrap up here because I know we might have questions and I also have to run. It's up to us. As I mentioned earlier, let's be careful when we are making the next line of decisions, not to bypass salvation. You know, in the hurry to grab grace. Yes. Because that is what is killing <laughs> Nobody wants to walk for anything. It's all about grace, grace, grace. But ultimately, even when you have grace, you will still need salvation. It's a lazy, and I'll say it for pastors to know, the idea of grace can be a very lazy attitude towards elevation to salvation. Because ultimately, where do you want to go? You're going to go to heaven. That's the pursuit of every Christian. The grace is abundant on the way to it. But you have to tow the paths of salvation. You can get grace because God is always gracious. He will give you plenty of long line. But you can get the grace and on the final day of judgment, you say, well, I'm giving you everything. But you didn't walk towards salvation. And if you don't walk towards salvation, you can be saved. Let everyone say hallelujah. Hallelujah! Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kiyemi. So most people don't know how I met Dr. Kiyemi. There are two Bolaja Kiyemi's in Nigeria. One of them is very the older Kiyemi and is a writer. He too is a writer. How I found out about him was recent, and I'm confessing this. He was writing on Sahara Reporters. This is not something you should be saying publicly. Um, and I published him. And I got a letter from the person who called himself the real Bolaja Kiyemi. That somebody is plagiarizing his name to write articles against the government. And the government wants to grab him. And uh, he believes that it is a conspiracy that I converted. I said, you can't be the only Bolaja Kiyemi in Nigeria. You know, the only family that I know doesn't exist aside from my own is Shawaran. But I know a lot of Akiyemis. And I told him to sue me. While I go look for the Bolaji Akiyemi. <laughs> yes. Before he could sue me, I was able to produce a more magnificent, <laughs> and, uh, more intelligent, uh, and I'm not lying. That's, and I told you the first time I met him. I was actually afraid that he might be using a student name. But this one, 
Ezilia Ambela. Thank you very much.
my good brother, Etua, they are working together. And uh, my prayer is that this country will be better very soon by the grace of God. This morning, I've sent it to Pastor Etua and uh, Dr. and son. There is this Indian pastor who was prophesying about what Nigeria will be in the next five years. But are we ready for it? When Chairman of INEX said yesterday that he's not sure election we hold, because, yes, because they, uh, we are still working analog. Look, I mean, Pastor Etua commenced a program some years ago whereby the diaspora can vote 30 million without leaving your house. I'm scared of going to vote because I don't know what is going to be there. So what you and other people are doing to make sure that, you said it, Brazil went to vote within a few hours, they got the results. India, Japan and us, we're just wondering. I will refuse to let the system work. And thank God we are here because I believe those who are here today, they will make it work. You and other candidates, when will you come together and say we must adopt a electric system to vote so that we don't have to queue for the whole day? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, my name is Shola Aluadipo. Let me first of all say that uh, my perspective about who you are has changed today. I used to believe that the show is here. And when I see you go to places with crowds of youths who are, you know, but it has, you know, changed today. You are a good man, very intelligent. And I believe really God to help you. Now, these are the questions. I've had you know, spoke in you know, quite a number of conferences and meetings. So I don't want to go in the way of asking you how you're going to change Nigeria. But my two questions with regards to the church. First of all, if you become president, how do you intend to protect the Christian church in the north? Considering all that you are going through right now that is obvious for everyone to see. And then secondly, coming back to the generality of the Christian church, how do you intend to establish the robust relationship between the government and the church? Thank you very much. That's my question. I want to stand on what he just said. He said that his perspective about you changed. Honestly, when they called you, I was shouting violence pro max. <laughs> because you are different from what I know and I've seen about you. So my perspective has also changed about you from today and then uh, you want to become the president of Nigeria what are you going to bring to the table what are you going to do there that is different from what others have done how are you going to change things because we are tired of stories we are tired of people coming to tell us they will do this they will do that how are you going to change the economy of Nigeria and how are you going to upgrade the living conditions of Nigeria? That's just what I want to know. Thank you. Today, I have made a decision because the many people are running across the country. But who can we serve with them? Speak our truth. Who does not speak our truth? And I tell you. But I have a very simple. Uh, I have watched somewhere when you said uh, what the youth are doing to save their family and save themselves. So I want to know the specific plans of youth. Thank you very much. Uh, I will. I will respond very quickly because I also have to leave. And uh, I will respond to what I heard uh, said there that there's a decision already, and there's only one man that has been decided upon. Okay, that you are only going to be one man. Well, as you can hear from the congregation today, the man has been revealed unto you. So, it's up to you to listen to the word of God and the commandments. 
But I will really guarantee you that the only thing to which I've committed my life since I was born, and I'm 51 years old. Yes, 51. I may not look it, but I feel it. The burden of Nigeria is heavy. It's service to this country. And I will combine this with the question about what we'll do to protect the church. I've never said this publicly before, but I'm the first individual in this country who started tracking Boko Haram bombing of churches, especially when it started from the Madala in Abuja. To the point that we started telling in advance where the which church they are planning to go next. So I'm not here to please anybody that I'm a Christian, and I said it publicly, I'm not here to claim religion. I have, it is God who knows who is serving him, no human being knows. But if my life can be looked at transparently from what I've done with my life, I think I've served God a lot more than Nigerian leaders <laughs> in my own private capacity. But whomever that one man is, I guarantee you, if it's the choice of the people and his competence and has capacity, he will be able to find competent hands to work with him. But you don't have to recommend me to him. I don't even know if I can work in government for two days. I'm too independent to work in a government. Because I know what happens in government. If this were to be a cabinet meeting, the president will fire me after my speech today. So let the leader that imagines, uh, imagines transparently choose the people they want to work with. You know what is painful, most painful to me in Nigeria is that there are a lot of competent Nigerians all over the place. You know this Jaguar thing now. You see the banks that cannot run their backhand computer backbone anymore. It's because they are tech guys that have left to Canada. Some of your doctors have already left for London. Some of your nurses have left. Architects have left. They have finished pushing everybody. They are now going to go for Nigerian teachers. The same teachers that we said are not good. They started hiring them in the UK since last week. The same teachers that you always spit on. The guys who are collecting 30,000 naira per month. And Kogi pays 5,000 per month. That's the minimum wage in Kogi State. Yes. They are hiring them. By the time they take everybody out, you will know that you always have competent people, but you did not treat them well. Yes. But that's what I'm coming to do, is to restore that dignity and glory to people who have kept this country together, whichever capacity they have done it. And I repeat again, sir, that person, the only one person has been revealed unto you. Don't overlook the person. With regards to culture, our brother asked about culture and tradition. The Agbara thing was a joke for me, even though I hate flamboyance. Especially the people you call excellency, the way they dress. You know, when you have people have nothing upstairs and they are dressing deep, it annoys me. You know, I wish, sorry, I wish there's a law that says that if you are wearing a brother, you must have something upstairs. So that when we see somebody wearing a brother, we know that they are respectable people. But the bigger they are brother in this country, the more useless they are. That's why I was condemning Agbada for the point of symbolism, not for the point of culture. In terms of culture, any country that loses its language has lost its way. The English knew what they were doing when they made English compulsory. If you find somebody today who is speaking in Yoruba, we make fun of them. Yoruba, we make. go to Facebook, if you write something that is not correct in English, you say, oh, your English is not correct. Have you ever found a Yoruba man telling a white man that their Yoruba is not correct? They knew what they were doing. So until we start writing our own language, and I will make sure that is done. The crime that was committed against culture started when our parents started penalizing people who speak vernacular. Did you not go to a school where they say vernacular speaking is totally for you? What is the meaning of vernacular? Your culture. 
Some of you have been class captain before who were collecting money for people who violated. Yes. See, yes. see a confession at the back. Yes. You know, I want to see people who can speak Yoruba better than English and not people who can speak English better than Yoruba. We need to have a language of instruction to be our real language. That is the way to restore our culture. Those of us who studied, who, are, who grew up as Christians with our parents, we understood spirituality more with the Yoruba Bible than the English Bible. Because I used to be the custodian of my father's Bible, the big one, you know? The one I have leather cover, Yoruba. By the time you read it, you will understand what they are saying. So we must restore all of that. Vernacular speaking must not be prohibited in our country. It should be French, China, and other important languages that we prohibited in our country. Let's write mathematics in Yoruba, in Hausa, in Ibibio. You will understand it better. Translated into 78 Nigerian languages, but you don't have physics and economics and uh, chemistry translated to your language, and you want to compete in the world. <coughs> That's the truth. Let's translate every goddamn book to our language. We're already doing a good job with the Bible. There are 78 different Bibles in Nigeria. You can put me anywhere. Translated to local language. I've seen the Robo Bible before, Epic Bible. We want to see physics Bible too, uh, physics uh, book too, yes. Chemistry book, computer book written in Yoruba. We will be able to compete with you can believe in God and also progress in life. Are you getting my point? So, cultural language is very important for me, so I agree with you completely. Uh, somebody said Nigeria needs a deliverer. Our political party, the African Action Congress, do you know what we want to do? We want to put liberty on the ballot. We are for total liberation of Nigeria. In fact, our party don't believe. Our party don't believe. Our party don't believe that. We don't believe in the white man independence. We are, we are going for brand new independence for Nigeria. It is the reason why I have spoken openly. And I've said, people are talking about the constitution. Which constitution? The Nigerian constitution is a fraudulent document created by Decree 22 it was promulgated with. Were you there when they wrote it? No. Who was there? Look, you can't find any military general who will tell you that they were there when they wrote the Nigerian constitution. The American constitution was written in 1789. We know all the people who were present when they were framing it, even though we weren't there. How come we don't know the ones that did our own in 1999? So we have to create or frame a brand new constitution that will take care of so many of the problems that we are discussing now. Nigeria doesn't need a deliverer, it needs a leader. Yes. Yes. Nobody can deliver anybody. Say it's you people that will deliver yourselves. Yes. And the more entertaining part, how do you push Nigeria from consumption? Uh, to a productive nation. It's very simple. Right? Produce, produce, and produce. But before you can produce anything out of Nigeria, you must have electricity. Otherwise, you can't produce anything. There is no nation in the world that has an industrial revolution without industrial scale power source. It was a steam engine. Steam engine that revolutionized the movement of persons around the world, the steam engine. Of course, accompanied with the Maxine gun, with which they shot anybody who stood in their way. Some people said it also was accompanied by the Bible and the Quran, but don't quote me anywhere on that. Elections, our elections here, they are not elections. These are sham elections. By now, if you can transact businesses with your cell phone, that involves your life-saving money. Why can't you vote in one single election in a year? Why should I have to travel to those states to go and vote for myself when I could have done it on my cell phone? And by who transparently who has won the election. And you can eliminate all the judges, including the Supreme Court, from imposing on you candidates who did not participate in the election like in Imo states, as your governor. 
because they will be transparent and clear. But you know the reason they don't want simple, straightforward election is that the so-called front runners cannot win class elections in Nigeria today. They know it. The people who are afraid to do common debates, they know they can't win elections. Yes. The ones who are calling town hall meeting blah blah blue, no, they can't win elections. They know it. They know that if the system is digitalized, the digitalization of the system will also retire non-digital brains from the system. They know it. It's the reason why they don't want transparent elections, but you can force it on them. I have said it, and I'll say it again. We can say very nice things, we can pray, we can fast, but until we put our feet on the ground, these people will continue to take us for granted. That is to say, a revolution is looming. And it will happen so fast, it will not be televised. I'm telling you this now. And the question again about protecting the church in the north. Listen, you are thinking about the church in the north, what about the mosque in the north as well? Everybody in the north is in trouble. When they finished with the churches bombing in the, the mid-2005 and when Boko Haram started, 2009, 2010, they started going, you know, some, Christians, some Muslims were happy. Oh, you know, it's churches, it doesn't concern us. But when they finished with the churches, they went to the mosque. So everyone, whether you are Muslim or Christian, needs protection. Whether you are animists, as long as they are citizens of this country, the job of the president must be to protect you. But there will be special protection for me as the president for areas that are vulnerable. I know where the churches are, that before they can gather together, they must have an army surround their building. In places like Adamawa, Plateau, Benue, Kassina, I went to Gombe in 2018 and I discovered that there are more, there are probably almost 60 to 70 percent people in Gombe are Christians. It's the same thing with Kelly. When a Christian traditional ruler was dethroned, was not allowed to become you know, the ref owner of his position in Gombe, I fought for it and restored him to the position. I met him at uh, Trump, I was this hotel, the big hotel in Abuja one day, and he said to me, Mr. Shore, I've never met you before, but you are the one who made it possible for me to become the leader of my people. I said, how? He said, through Sahara reporters. Yes, everybody in this country is in need of protection. What about our schools? The schools for which they are abducting 70 kids, at the same. don't they need protection as well? We need to protect everybody, regardless of their faith, their ethnic background, their sex, or their interest in the country. Everybody is in need of protection. And I know that when I say this, as some Christians have told me, that I'm not Christian enough. No, I'm not trying to be a Christian enough. I'm trying to be a good man. I'm trying to be a great citizen. I'm trying to be a patriot. Because if Nigeria gets it right, the African continent will get it right. And when we are getting it right, when we go to the mall, we don't ask who is a Christian or who is a Muslim. When I arrived in America, I did my first job, and I was paid a check. I didn't ask who the person was, I just went and spent my money. You know? It was when I got to Nigeria that I realized that when you lose everything, you have to cling to something. Sometimes it's religion, sometimes it's your ethnic background, sometimes it's the name of your father or the grave of your father, because you need something to cling on to when you've lost everything. And for a lot of our people, they've lost everything. Nothing is left. Nothing is left. And the relationship with the church, I don't need to tell you, I have great relationship with the church. I have great relationship with leaders of our churches. I just told you earlier on that I so much love them, I don't want to create another church so there won't be unhealthy competition. So how much more can you love the church more than that? I don't need to patronize the church by saying I'll be a leader that loves leaders of the church. I went to primary schools created by the Methodist Church. There's a primary school in my village created by the Catholic Church. The last one of my mom 
speaker was saved by nurses from the Catholic Church. So the church has done great for this country. They brought schools. In fact, we are seeing more churches these days and less humanitarianism. And the church must go back to humanitarian work as well. We are challenging the church to do that. So that you can create more schools, create more hospitals, and create great places that make people live long. Because without knowing it, and saying, well, I want to go to heaven, how about if this is the heaven that you have been wanting to go to? And which other heaven can be better than this place? Where you have iron ore, crude oil, sogum, everything. Which other heaven could be better than that? Nigeria is heaven, but your leaders made it hell. The only solution to making it heaven again is to send those leaders to hell. <laughs> There is nothing better than having a country that has raw materials already. It's like you get home and you want to cook and your fridge is loaded with all the ingredients. What do you do? Open the fridge, put your pot on the fire and start cooking. But if you have irresponsible people who have such things, they don't open the fridge, they don't cook and they start ordering from outside. And they keep claiming that they are not eating healthy. I mean, eating healthy. When you don't eat what you cook, how would you tell whether there's too much salt from something you order from food sensation? And you have hypertension, and you are wondering why the hypertension is killing you. It started from where you are ordering salt from now. But if you want to eat healthy food, eat the one that you can gauge the salt that goes into this. I'm just giving you that analogy because there's no time. Otherwise, there's no problem with Nigerian economy. It's just that the economy has too many thieves as opposed to those who need help. So having said that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for bringing me once again. Thank you, great Another.